Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Harebrained Games. Today we're going to do a review of Wild Serengeti. Look at those eyes, they're angry. This is a game so terrifying that even the designer's name didn't want to be appearing on it. Anyway, it's done by a man named Gung Ho Kim. And it's basically a discovery of the wildlife of the Serengeti and capturing those moments and filming the documentary of a lifetime. Let's get looking. Okay, let's take a look at what comes inside Wild Serengeti. You get this beautiful two-sided map of uh, assumedly the Serengeti. Each one has a, each side of the map, one's got, yeah, they're just different, different patterns. Um, well, let's just actually show you, why not, shall we? So on the one side you have, river runs through it, um, yeah, and then on the other side you have this sort of just a different configuration. It's not, uh, you know, life-altering, impacting, it's just a different way, a different sort of composition for ways that you're going to want to uh, place the animals and move the animals in the wilds of the Serengeti. Um, yeah, so that's what you have. The other thing you have is this is the uh, action placement board. You'll notice a variety of abundant creatures. Uh, each one very clever and very cute. Thank you for not making them just cubes. Uh, they are a delight. Uh, you also have money, meat, uh, visual effects, and uh, some, in case you get over 100 points, you get one of these alligators that says, yeah, baby. And then you get these, which take place. This is a award you'll get during the course of play. Uh, then you have a huge, vast stack of these cards. These cards all give you uh, puzzle-like quests on uh, how to arrange animals. And as you arrange animals, you complete these and add them to your timeline. That's right, your super awesome video video timeline. You know, everyone wants a, everyone wants hits, right? Hits, the hits keep on coming. So. Then you have two player pieces, one for you to use when your action placement, and of course a scoring token. That's it. Comes with a manual as well. And uh, for limited time only, everyone named me gets a copy of Messina 1347 in the box. Kidding. Kidding, kidding. Uh, and that's it. And then you get, of course, your player icons. That's it. Uh, let's... Oh, no. How could I forget the Rock of Ages? Cleft for me. All right. So you got this baby. He's, uh, he's going to keep track of our, our rounds, six rounds. This is where you keep two of the prizes that over the course of play you're going to win awards. And then you have these uh, seismic events that basically uh, during rounds four, five, and six will alter the course of the game in ways that set you off. The great migration has come and who can withstand it? Um, all right, there we go. Let's get into an example of play. So on your turn, in round one, everyone gets six coins. They also get to start with four cards. Why do these cards matter? Because the whole point of this game, how you're going to win, is by earning enough points. How do you get points? Well, I'm glad you asked. There's a score track wherein you earn points. You're going to earn points for a variety of different things. These are star points, for example. If you complete this card, you're going to get three points. Uh, then there are more complex ones that say if... You know, that, that you can score for each one of these uh, symbols you have in your video video timeline, you're going to get certain points. This is a timing thing. You're going to want to have some of these already in play before you actually complete this card. So, makes it interesting. Yes, it does. Uh, there's a common area of six cards, a discard pile, a huge pile of cards ready to roll. And there we go. Let's just get into play. There's six actions you can take. Uh, the first, uh, first round, you can't do these two. No big deal. Uh, if you're playing less than four players, some of them are locked off. Basically, whoever has... The Tree of Amazing Gloriousness is going to start first. And what they're going to do is they're going to decide what to do with their action token. Ready, set, action. All right, so what are we going to try and do? Well, here's the thing. You're going to be placing animals. This is basically a spatial puzzle of the highest order. You're going to be trying to arrange animals and complete objectives. Uh, let's go over the simple ones first. Um, this one's probably the most simple. This one says that you have to have three these three animals somewhere on the board on this terrain. It doesn't have to be anything particular. These are usually the easy ones. So then, and your reward is you get some meat and you get a VFX token. Oh yeah, and then of course you get this symbol, which will be worth some points to some cards in some fashion at some point later. All right, let's uh, let's do that, and then so let's begin. Uh, the person with the Tree of Amazing Gloriousness says, you know what, I 
am going to try and complete this. Maybe, maybe not. What does this say? This means that you have to have these three animals in a straight line orthogonally. Doesn't have to be in a row. Doesn't have to be arranged or organized that way. You can even have animals in between. They just have to be on the same row or column, these three animals. So let's start there. Let's grab the, let's grab this baby here. All right, so we pay a coin, which means this coin is going to go back to the bank. And we're going to grab these, this, this animal here. Uh, we're going to place this animal wherever we darn well want. Um, in this case, let's just place him here. Why not? That's it. Might be able to pull off a diagonal or whatever. And that's it. That's it for them. Now, he has a choice. Uh, yellow. And yellow says, huh, what if I want a hyena too? Maybe I want to do that same thing. Well, he could, but it's going to cost him two coins to go where others have gone before. Um, so we're going to Star Trek our way over here and decide, you know what, I like zebras, they make me happy in life. So we're going to go ahead and go here, pay a coin, and we're going to grab a zebra and put it anywhere we want. Now here is an adjacency situation. The animal here is the prime animal. It wants to be on the grasslands, so we're going to put it here. If we ever have a giraffe and a gazelle <clears throat> on the anywhere in the eight regions around it we can score this baby yeah we can do it all right now we're back to our other friends here other things you can do is take a card from the scene pool we look for things that can benefit us for example uh, i have some bananas here so if i complete these banana cards i can grab this card here and when i score it it's going to give me uh, multiplied bonuses because of my bananas let's go that route so let's grab this one cost a coin and then we replace it. You can buy additional ones if you want for a coin a piece. For example, if I'm like, you know what, I'm really going to go for likes. This icon means that for every one of these likes you get for your video, you're going to get a crescendoing amount of points. And uh, you can even overlap it and go. So right now, if I were to score these, these cards, grab these and score them, which I will because I'm going to pay. That's right. I'm going to grab these and put them here. And if I end up completing these and I wind up with these in my... In my show, then at the end of the game, I'm at 5. That's 14. So, yeah, let's keep it going. All right. So then we do that. And that's, this is really the essence of play. Then we go over to yellow, or yellow and yellow is going to go, hmm, what am I going to do? I'm going to, well, I'm going to buy another one. Let me go buy something that, that matters to me too. So let's go buy a giraffe. And again, we're looking, going, you know what? It doesn't really matter where the giraffe is. Are there any other animals near any other cards that need giraffes? Yeah, there are. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in the water. No, I'm not. I'm going to put it here. I can always move it to the water later. Um, and there you go. This is the essence of play almost entirely. I'm going to fast forward. Actually, no, let me just show you some, some configurations here. So, for example, I have this animal here. And I need, and he needs in the water, and then I need two lions, and I'm not lying about this. <laughs> uh, one needs to be in here, and one needs to be anywhere. Look at that, I've completed this objective. Woohoo! I get seven points. Look at that, seven points. And I get these here. When I, uh, this, this icon will count towards my, my goal. So, for example, if I do that, and then I end up getting a card that uh, affords me the ability to score points based on how many of those I have. Um, for example, here, if I finish this one, then for these two, I'm going to get two plus two is four, which is cool. So I can get some points for that. And again, these. So these, uh, all of the cards interact. So you're, if you have these cards that give you this, this icon here of, of uh, leaves, then you're going to want to also look for cards here that give you um, bo like points for for leaves, so that you're not they're not leaving you hanging. <laughs> um, and that's where it becomes powerful for the other action here, which is you can take cards from the scene. Uh, you can also renew cards from the scene, and that means just wipe it away, kind of reminiscent of games like Turn and Taxes or others, where it's like you know what, wipe the slate clean. I need to go through cards faster, and there's a point when that when you're going to want to do that. Because you can go through them, and then you can, of course, buy one. You're going to get cards every round, but sometimes you're going to be looking for ones specifically that help augment your approach. Like, for example, this one here is great. 
you know, straight line scene, easy to do, and then you get, uh, uh, <laughs> of course, you get number of bananas divided by two is how many stars you get. So um, they range from simple to complex, and there are some that are even rare. There's some rare cards in here uh, that give you a lot of points, but it's a little bit tricky to, to pull them off. Um, and that's, that's basically it. We can show you these again, just as an example. This one's in a straight line. It can be here, here, and here, and it will count because it's all in a row, etc. Anyway, so then you're going to go, and it, when everyone's spent their money and the round's over, you move it forward, everyone gets their cash back, everyone gets an extra card, uh, and you just keep rolling along for the first three rounds. Now, in round four, you're going to do a bonus, and this is the, this is the, uh, this is the special uh, Rhino, uh, Rhino Award. So you have, for whoever has the most Rhinos is going to get points, Whoever has second place is going to get less points. You even have special symbols here that uh, that basically say that lets you go. I don't care what animal it is. If I've got this in this icon here in play, there's an example like here. Then I'm going to get it counts for one. So even if you don't have a rhino, this counts as a virtual rhino. Uh, and there you go. And then you go round five, round six, four, and five, and six. This is like I said. You're going to get these great migrations, and then you're going to look and go, well, shoot, all of the animals that are here. Are going to have to go away that messes up your plan etc chaos and glory abound in wild serengeti that's it um yeah play six rounds earn some points move some animals don't get bit all right let's get into my final thoughts on wild serengeti okay final thoughts on wild serengeti all right let's go over the cons first then the pros then my final thoughts I have to say uh, that as far as cons go, for a game about the wild, rugged realities of Mother Nature in a sun-scorched portion of the globe teeming with wild and untamed animals, Serengeti, from a gameplay perspective, curiously plays it safe. I'm sure it's, it's somewhat more mild Serengeti than wild Serengeti. Uh, there's nothing particularly noteworthy, for example, about certain elements like action selection, which is as basic and simple as can be. Uh, it's the baseline of whatever, you know, grab a character, gra or grab an animal, move an animal, find a card. Um, you know, and that's not necessarily the most riveting part of the game for me. The, the three types of patterns that you can come up with, you know, the, the adjacent one, the line, the anywhere on these terrain things, is... Um, it's loose and it's leisure and it's nice, you know, like a safari that you're taking a nap through. Um, the one thing that's missing is that Tetris-like tension effect. It never comes into play or rarely comes into play. Examples being like Calico or Tashkalar or Cascadia where you have the spatial puzzle set before you. you know, there are these boom moments where you just pull off this crazy insane move in this tight space and you manage to pull off things and like, yes! I've got it all lined up. The te the whole line goes away, or whatever. Here, um, you have some of that a little bit, particularly in the rarer cards, where you're like, if I can pull this off, that's awesome. But it's just not. It's just not that kind of a game. You're not. That isn't the focal point. Um, I mean, it is in innovative to have the three patterns as sort of a template uh, to a degree. But then you, you know, basically these three patterns are reused over and over. Uh, you know, to be filled in with environments and, and you know, animals environment matchings. And so it's basically three different patterns with templatized, and then you fill in the rest with like this. You know, just grab stuff off the shelf and fill it in. That's not as compelling to me as say ones where you've got a little bit more of a of a spatial, uh, you know, tetragonal, tet you know, Tetris-like puzzle. Um, Tash Kalar, I think, really, really uh, shown for that one. But this one, that's just not going to be that awesome. It just makes this, it makes the spatial part of this entertaining, but not really entirely thrilling. Um, there's nothing intrinsically in the game to be afraid of when you're playing it. So, you know, Wild, I'm not sure it was. It's, um, it's good that that this is a game that doesn't fulfill the idea that you're that you're you're hunting something or there's some sort of violent conflict there's not the whole thing is really framed in the idea about making a documentary movie uh, you know and the the movie making part is described well uh, it's just but the actual out the actual feel of it here in the game is marginal at best um, your timeline you know your documentary time it's not really a timeline it's more just a it's effectively just an icon tray and that's 
meh, it's okay. Uh, the length of the game is also exasperated by the fact that it just really doesn't have a, cur a crescendo of any sorts. You're doing the same thing every round the same way. Uh, you just, you have six rounds. There are small changes in the latter rounds. You know, you have, oh, well, here's some trophy things. Great, if I happen to aim that way, cool. Um, not that entirely thrilling. Um, otherwise, it's the same. The my great migration cards just don't do anything for me either. I don't... I get the idea like, oh, let's shift the board around, but here's, it, it feeds into the one thing I absolutely don't like about games like uh, that, that do this sort of thing, where like, I have nothing I can prepare for, no forewarning, no idea what's going to happen, unless I memorize all the cards, but even then, I don't know. And then, boom, look, oh my gosh, great migration, how narrative. Uh, but it's not, it's just a crapshoot, a subtle tip, you know. Making animals in a, in, a, in a global pattern just disappear without any forewarning or ability to prepare, that's not a migration, that's a rapture. And so those things didn't really impress me much with the game to go on. But let's get into the pros, because there were quite a few. Uh, I, liked the, I liked the rule book, I liked the way they laid it out, I liked... Um, yeah, yes, it's a pizza box size, but whatever. It's uh, it's really well done. It easily explains all the concepts, everything you need to do in a logical and orderly fashion. It adds very good examples. It tells you pretty much all you need to know. No complaints about that. The solo experience is also pretty much a replica of the a multiplayer experience, so there's no extra learning curve. It's kind of a beat the running threshold uh, or else insert trying to continue kind of vibe where you know, like each round you have to have at least this much in points and that much in points and growing and that's fine there's a there's a kind of a quasi campaign kind of thing it doesn't really change much uh, but whatever it's fine it's a fine solo game and probably it, I would lean yeah it's a fine solo game uh, the artwork and the animals are absolutely amazing they're really well done I love it I think that's the high point of the game is the board is just just looks and feels like the Serengeti uh, in its art style, the animals are all distinctive. You don't have to go. You don't have to map green block, alligator, yellow block, lion. It's just I don't even have the deluxe version of this game, and it's still just exquisite. The card art is great. Everything just shines like this sunny, sunny kind of place, the sunny documentary place. So I definitely give it props for that. Um, the spatial aspect, like I said, wasn't terribly interesting. Yeah, interesting to me, but the star of the show is the cards and the timing of the cards and how you do things with the cards. That's really where uh, your heart really lies in this game, and that's in the tons and tons of cards, the thick, thick stack of cards, uh, many alike but not entirely. And I think that's the cards play off each other, and the timing of you know the cards is very critical. Having a plan in the direction you're going to go, which which you know icons you need to be able to fulfill this particular objective. Uh, is great because you want to, you know, when you fulfill an objective that gives you points based on other cards you previously had, you have a timing issue that you need to solve, and that's really where the puzzle is. I like that. I think it's, you know, I think it's very important to have the timing is critical. Um, the thing that, the thing that that also adds to that is that it makes uh, the other two actions beyond just grab an animal, move an animal, swap an animal, is uh, the reality that. Um, you you do need those you do need that churning action to go okay I'm gonna grab a card with extra coins I could grab other cards because I really need to try to get just the right cards you're not just going you know you could be short order cook like I'm gonna grab I'm gonna complete the the easiest ones I can because I can just cycle through them but that's really not going to give you a coherent strategy in the long run and I think it probably will not necessarily put you at the top of the pack. <laughs> Uh, and so that's kind of cool. I like that. I like that uh, you know cycling the deck, the card, you know the you know the action to cycle the deck to keep churning through and getting the right cards is very val. It makes it more valuable with the way that the card play is the star. Uh, one point of tension not in the board is that everyone gets to see everyone else's uh, tableau and they can in intentionally mess with you. And uh, some of the times they do so. It's the off-board nastiness tension that the other players provide. Um, oh, you know, I'm looking. Oh, that card is really going to benefit you I see where you're going with that ha 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 sweep the leg by wiping the common card area clean now it does lead to a lot of points where you I mean there is a lot of thinking here and there's not a lot of forethinking not a forethought there's mostly now thought uh, you don't you know you have no the, the board can be totally arranged in a different way by the time you get back to yourself and so 
you you really just need to go like, okay, what do I got? What can I use? What's going to help other people? And it can be overwhelming. It can slow the game down if you want. I didn't think it was that big of a deal, but I think it's pretty cool that you can, you know, that you have that ability to kind of mess with other people in indirect ways that still annoy them. And that's beautiful. And even if it doesn't necessarily shine through starkly, I do like the idea of having the game be a video you know, a documentary making nature game kind of thing. I think uh, that was a that was a good idea, a good vibe. Maybe it didn't, maybe it wasn't fully manifest here, but I still like the idea with the video being made. I think I think there's some room for something like that. I just, for example, last month played Roll Camera, which is kind of a make a movie and so, you know. I think I think there's room for something like that here. I think that could be really exercised well. The only other game I've seen that really kind of tapped into the idea of that was Zambezi, and that was many many years ago so anyway in summary for wild Serengeti uh, this is reminiscent and takes me back to the Winter Olympics in the 80s that I used to watch because I watched TV then I don't really watch TV now you know you ever have that like the ice dancing and the ice skating and the pairs and all that stuff and you know that they split the scoring you have your technical merit and then you have your artistic merit I'm gonna do the same thing here because it deserves it from the art standpoint Serengeti is basically sixes perfect sixes all across the board I love the vibe I love the style I love the details to the animals it's cute like you know my little ones play with them whether they have, you know, they don't even forget the game. They just like the little game, you know, animals. That's great. I have zero complaints about that. From the technical merit side, I think um, it took the safe route on the, on the gameplay. Uh, you know, didn't do any triple axles, nothing gutsy. You know, so it gets some solid fives to 5.5s. And, of course, the judge from... Tanzania gives it a 4.1. Um, but anyway, the the point is it's a safe and pleasant game. Um, it's a, maybe a little long in the tooth, but uh, plenty enjoyable enough, uh, especially for a casual family gaming audience to be a main event on gaming night. Uh, I know what you're thinking. Giraffe to just take my word for it, but uh, I'm no hypocrite about this. Okay, I'm done with the puns. After all, i got to draw the lion somewhere. Anyway, thanks again, and we'll see you next time on Hairbrain Games.